Okay, so we're getting into the, one of the fundamental properties of calculus, which is the derivative. And we just looked at limits and continuity of functions. And limits kind of give us a way to find the derivative of a function at a particular point. And we actually kind of looked at this at the beginning of the semester. We looked at average rate of change versus instantaneous rate of change. And so basically, we're just going to go back to the um, instantaneous rate of change. If I pull this problem, one of the first problems from, from your textbook um, in the exercises in the end of 3.1. So it says in this following problem, we're going to use the grid and a straight line edge to make a rough estimate of the slope of the curve in y units per x units at the point piece of one and piece of two. Okay, so first of all, we want to look at what is this average or instantaneous rate of change right here at our point one. And I'm going to try this. We don't know how well, I don't know how well this will work. But I want to take this straight rule, and I don't know if I can, again, I probably should have practiced this beforehand. I'm wondering if I can locate it. We go. Okay, so I want to take the straight rule and I want to get it so that it is making a straight line pretty much at this point. And so if I do that, let me see if I can draw a line now through this point. I have this line right here that looks like it's going through this point, piece of one. And in my case, if I wanted to look at piece of one, that looks like it's the point when x is this is kind of bizarre because of the units that that it's giving us. Oops, actually one. So I'm thinking of these as a third, two thirds, three thirds, negative, and in this case, negative four thirds. And right here, again, this is not that great, but um, here I would say, again, negative four thirds. But let's look at the rate of change of two points on here that we actually can see. So if I look at this point right here, this point is when x is negative 2, my y value is 0. And then let's look at another point that it looks like it's crossing. What about? And so, let me get rid of that one. How about right here? Okay, so this was, again, unfortunately, these, these intervals aren't very, I wish these were in quarters, but it's not. Because here's zero, so this would be a third, two thirds, negative three thirds, negative four thirds. Here, this would be negative five thirds. So my x value is negative five thirds. Then my y value at this point is negative. So if I'm looking at the slope, and it doesn't really matter what two points I find on this line, but if I'm trying to find the slope between these two points, so I'm looking at the change in my y value. So zero minus a negative one all over the change in my x value. So my x value is negative 2 minus my y value of x value, which is negative 5. So this reduces. So m is equal to positive 1 all over 
negative 2 plus 5 thirds. I wish I had made more room, so I'm going to make more room. And I'm going to erase. Sorry. Simplify this as a, a complex fraction. And so, a couple ways I can do this. I can get rid of the fractions within the fraction by multiplying by my OCD of the fraction within, which is three. Or I can get a common denominator down here in the denominator so that I can add those two things. I typically like to multiply by that fancy one of the LCD over the LCD. And so, if we do that, we have in the numerator. 3 times 1, nothing cancels, which is 3, all over. And the denominator, if we distribute just 3, I have negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6, plus distributing it to the 5 thirds, the whole point with that fraction to go to, goes away, the 3 cancel, you're just left with a 5. So our slope here is 3 all over negative 1, which is negative 2. Okay, so it's following three for every one, it's going to the right, or we can say it's rising three for every one, it's going to the left. And so this is what is asking us to find a rough, um, rough estimate of the slope of the curve at that particular point P sub one. And it wanted it in units um, of y for units of x. So when I wrote this as a integer and didn't write it as a rational number, I could be marked wrong on my math lab. Okay, so then it asked us to do the same thing, but find the slope at p sub 2. And so if we did a straight edge and we went to p sub 2, notice that this axis ends up being a horizontal line. That one is actually the, the easier case because we can just choose any two points on this horizontal line. So we could choose p sub 2. This looks like it's at the point when x is 1, y is 2. And then we could choose another point on the line. So another point would be when x is 2, y is also 2. So if we find the slope between those two points, the change in y, so 2 minus 2, all over the change in x, 1 minus 2. So the 0 over negative 1, 0 over a number other than 0 is OK. It's hopefully you remember that the slope of a horizontal line is zero. Okay, let's say this is part of the homework or part of the, the problem you're going to be asked is finding the equation of this tangent line. So let's do the easier one. Not the easier one, the harder one. So let's find the equation of the tangent line. Let's say it was at negative four thirds, negative four thirds. Okay, 
you know, two things you need to know when you're trying to find the equation line, you need to know a point on the line and you need to know the slope of the line. We already did the work where we found the slope of this line right here. The slope of our tangent line we found was negative three over one. In this case, I don't need it as a rational function. I'm just gonna write it as negative three. And then we also need a point on the line. So usually when we're using a point, we're using the point at where we were trying to find the slope of that particular point. So at this point one, it was negative four thirds, negative four thirds. So two ways to do this. You can look at y minus y sub one is equal to a slope all times x minus x sub one. The point slope formula. Or I tend to like my slope intercept formula. Either way, I'm going to get the same result. It's just that the slope intercept formula is easier to graph when it's in this form. Y equals mx plus. Technically, if we go back in, we know what our slope is. We can plug this in. We know what a point is. We know our x value is negative 4 thirds. And we know our y value is also negative 4 thirds. If we go back and plug those values in here, we can figure out what we have to do. So we have negative 4 thirds is equal to our slope, which we found to be negative 3, all times x, which is negative 4 thirds, plus Let's find B. And once we know B and we know what our slope is, which we found, we know what the equation of the line has to be. Let's simplify. I notice over here, so I'm negative four thirds equals a negative three in the numerator here and a negative or a three in the denominator. So we can actually cancel those. So I really have a negative of negative four, which is positive four. I can get the P by itself by subtracting 4. I'm going to need a common denominator in order to add numbers. So I have a negative 4 thirds minus a 12 thirds. So this is equal to negative 16 thirds. And our slope, again, from above is negative 3. So if we go back in and plug that into y equals mx plus b, we now have our equation line, and it's an easier equation to go in and just graph right here. So that y is equal to negative 3 x. Plus the negative 16. This is the equation of the tangent line. And x equals negative 4.
So if we're looking at the slope, of the curve, y is equal to f of x, at some point, I'm going to call it p x sub 0 comma f of x sub 0. Um, this is at the number the limit of h approaches zero of f of x to the zero plus h minus f of x to the zero all over. Provided, well, we have to say provided the limit exists, because we saw not all these limits didn't always exist. And if the, the tangent line to the curve at P is aligned to P with the curve. Tangent line. is a line Okay, so we kind of talked about this before. It's just a little bit of different notation the variables that they use. So, for instance, again, if we have some curve here, doesn't matter what the curve looks like, so I'm just going to just drop the thing coming. Um, and we choose some value, what this is saying, x of 0, so if you have some arbitrary value back here. So we know that this point right here, this is our curve f of x, this value right here is f of x of 0. And then we tend to want to choose a point that is close to this. It doesn't matter the left or right. So let's say I chose this point right here. And I chose it so that this distance between x of 0 and this, this point I'm choosing right now is a distance of these. And so I'm going to call this point right here x of 0 plus h. y value right in here. So I plug in x of 0 plus h, wherever I saw an x in my f of x function, that would give me my y. And if we were looking at the slope of that line, M would equal the change in R x value. So x of, I'm sorry, not the change in R x value. Our change in our y value. That's our x of 0 plus h minus this y value f of x. All over the change in my x value. So I started with this one, so x of 0 plus h minus this x value, x of 0. And if we simplify this down, the numerator doesn't really simplify, f of x of 0 plus h 
minus f of x of 0. All over x of 0 cancel in the denominator. So this was the equation of the secant line, or this was the slope of the secant line. Once we say, let's take this value of h and let's decrease that value and get smaller and smaller and closer to this x of zero. And that's where we look at the limit. As h goes to zero, the distance is shrinking. Getting closer and closer to x of zero of this function. Of the tangent line to the curve at the given point. Then sketch the curve and the tangent line together. So we're given the, the curve is y equals 2 squared for the x, and we want to find the equation of the tangent line. through the point one two. Well, sometimes they don't give you that point. They just give you the x value. So in this case, if they had just said, instead of this at the point one two, if they had said at x equals one, basically all we have to do is go back up here into our equation plug in 1 wherever we see an x, and we would get y is equal to 2 thirds of 1. Or y is equal to 2 times, well, square root of 1 is 1. So you can see that that is the point 1, 2. They might ask you just to say, at, find the equation of the tangent line at just this x value, you are going to need to find the point if they don't give you the point. And you just go back into the original equation and plug that in. But we also need to figure out what the slope is or at x equals 1. So we need to find slope the line y equals 2 square root of x at x equals 1. In this case, we're looking at the limit if h goes to 0. So we need to go back in here. And instead of plugging in x plus h like we had done in the past, our x value is at 1. So it's going to be 1 plus h. 
So if we want to write this as f of s, just so I can use my notation. In our case, the derivative at one, we're going to look at f of one plus eight minus f of one all over e. If we go into this equation, we have a limit of h goes to zero. Well, f of one plus h. So I'm going back in here. I have two square root. I see an x there. I replace it with one plus h. Minus f of one. Well, two all times the square root. And then put up this all over each value. We can simplify it a little bit. We have two square roots of one plus eight, that can't simplify. But minus two times square root of one is just two times one or two all over each. And we can try direct substitution. And so we're looking at when each is approaching zero. If we go back in here and we plug in zero for each, as long as we don't get that in determinant form, we're okay. But notice, you get it. You get one plus zero underneath that square root minus two all over. So this doesn't tell us anything. And so that tells us that we have to go back up here and we need to do some manipulation on this rational. There were some tools to help us, some tricks. And if it was a rational function and you had radicals in there, Try multiplying by the conjugate. So we'll multiply by a fancy one, and we're going to multiply by the conjugate of wherever that radical is. And so our radical is in the numerator. So let's do it by multiplying the conjugate of this. So this would be 2 times the square root of 1 plus 8. Conjugate is changing the sign in between those groupings. So plus 2 all over 2 square root of 1 plus 8. So let's um, use the fact those are the difference of two squares. So basically, difference of two squares a minus b times a plus b is a squared. So we have two square root of one plus eight quantity squared minus b squared. And my b value in this case is all over. I am not going to distribute that h. So h all over the conjugate c square root of 1 plus h. So using the rules, if you're squaring something, this is just one grouping. You find the square root of 1 plus h, so I can just square the first term. Four. And square the square root, which is one plus eight, minus two squared, which is four. All over eight, all times two square root of one plus eight. I distribute my four. Then if we get four plus four eight minus four all over h times two square root of one plus eight. And fourth cancel on my numerator. If that happens, notice you have a four eighths in the numerator all over an eight times. 
where you know one person can go to radical and then a plus two. Radical speech is cancel. And so when we did that manipulation, let's just not multiply by that fancy one. We changed our limit. That was this right here into the limit as h goes to zero. I have four left in my numerator, all over, and my denominator I have two square roots of one plus e. Now when we go in and plug in zero, wherever we see an H, we're not going to get zero or zero. And so doing this, we get four all over. Two square root of one plus zero. Or four all over two plus two. The denominator is four, so this is equal to two. Okay, so basically what we just found was we found the slope of the tangent line at x equals one. So our slope of the tangent line, maybe I'm going to put tan down here, is equal to one. We need to find the equation of the tangent line. Well, we need a slope, which we have, and we need the point. And we were given the point when x was 1, y was 2. So equation of the line, if you plug in those values into y equals mx plus b, you would just be left with b and we can solve for b. So my y value is 2 equals my slope of 1 times my x value, which is also 1. 2 equals 1 plus b. Last one on both sides, b is 1. So equation of that tangent line. y equals m1 times x. Okay, so they're going to ask us to graph these. So we're going to graph this, and we're going to graph, I called it f of x, or y equals 2 squared to x. Okay, so y equals x plus 1. It's in slope intercept form. I know my y intercept is 1. And I know my slope is also 1. So I can write that as 1 over 1. If I rise 1, I'm going to go over 1. So I rise 1, I'm going to go over 1. And I know if I graph f of x. Well, my domain, I can't have negatives underneath this radical or I get an uh, imaginary number. So for my domain, I know x has to be greater than or equal to zero. So if I plug in zero here, I get zero. Make a chart. I don't know what it looks like though. 
times root of zero is zero. If I plug in one, two times the square root of one is two. These numbers may know the square root of. So four. I plug in four in here, and the square root of four is two, two times two is four. Okay, so we graph our line, um, a plane of the tangent line, and we graph y equals two. Okay, so we have a few sections of doing the derivative like we're doing right now. Um, basically, what we're trying, what we're doing right now, is finding the derivative at a particular point. So we're trying to find the slope. What's that rate of change? That slope at that particular value at a function. Later on in this chapter, we'll find tools that we can do a shortcut, and we won't have to do that different quotient with the limit. Will make your life a little bit easier. Let's pull one more. I'm looking at a harder one, but I know if I do that, I'm not in the line out of time. I just want to take your writing board. Okay, so um, if I have y is equal to, I'm going to call it f of x. So then f of x is equal to 1 over x minus 1. And we want to find the slope of the curve at the indicated, um, at the point indicated. So x equals 3. So it didn't even ask us to find the equation of the tangent line. It just wanted to find the slope of the curve. Okay, so we're looking at the limit. And B is supposed to be zero. Normally it's x plus eight, but our x value in this case value is three. So three plus eight minus f of x, but our x value in this case that we're looking at x is three all over. Because we're going to go back in where we've seen x. We're going to plug in x plus, um, 3 plus 8. We're just bring down this limit. Limit 8 goes to 0. So we have a rational function 1 all over. I see an x there. We're going to replace it with 3 plus 8. And then I see a minus 8. Then I have minus. F of three. So all you're doing is going back into that function at the left. So every C and F parentheses, and we'll go back in and replace it with three. Now you put this whole thing all over. So we can simplify a little bit. So the limit eight goes to zero. Here, my first fraction in the numerator, I have 1 over, well, 3 plus h minus 1. 3 minus 1, so this is 2 plus h in the denominator, minus 1 over 
3 minus 1 in the denominator here is 2. Again, if you plug in 0 here, you get 1 half minus 1 half, which is 0, all over 0, which is an indeterminate form. And so recall if you had rational or complex fractions, fractions within the fraction. Another way to clear that is to multiply by a fancy one, which is the LCD or LCD of the fractions within here. Two all times two plus eight. So the whole point of doing that is when we distribute the pieces with the fractions, the denominators would go away. So the two plus eight just would cancel for the first fraction when I distribute it, leaving you with just this two. And then you have a minus. When you distribute to the second fraction, the two cancel, and you're left with careful though because it's a quantity. So put parentheses around that two plus eight. With a trick when you're multiplying, let's not distribute. So it's eight times two times two plus eight. Notice when you distribute this negative, we get the limit as h goes to zero. Well, two minus two samples. So you're left with a negative h in the numerator all over. I don't really like seeing it h times two. Doesn't really matter. Two times eight all times two plus eight. And if I plug in zero there, it's zero over zero, but these H's cancel with one another. And so we're looking at the limit. As H approaches zero, of negative one all over two is two plus eight. Now when we plug in zero wherever we see an H, it's going to fall out to be a number. Based on that slope at x equals 3 of the line um, 1 over not the line, the function 1 over x minus 1 is negative 1 4. Let me just pull that on down the slope. They will rotate. There we go. Okay, so we have a function. Let me move you guys away. Um, y was equal to one divided by what was it x minus one? X minus one. And we were looking at what was happening when x was equal to 3. So. And my computer's like freezing. Uh, 
And if we're looking at x equals 3, which is right here, notice that if we look at it, the slope is decreasing. And it's not decreasing very fast. And we got that it was de decreasing at negative 1 fourth. I wonder if I can pull this. So if I drop it, if it lets me. I'm, so I'm, I'm tempted to get a new computer. My husband doesn't have the same problems I'm having when I'm teaching, or he's teaching. Like the glitches with the sound and stuff. So I'm thinking this might be something that might be good to write off tax-wise. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so I'm looking at this, x equals three. I kind of wanted to do this so I could blow it up. We said that we looked at it and we saw that the slope there was negative one fourth. And so if I pull this over and I rotate it so that I can try to get it as accurate as I can. I really tried. We might get one, negative one fourth. So if I take this point here, x equals three, and I do this line, this is more of the approximation way. And we look at points where it's intersecting. I wish it wasn't so thick. But here we had a point right, that was at 3, 1. No, it's not. This is 3, 1 half. But I really want points that are going through. And so if I look at this, I don't know. But basically, we're falling four for every one. Or we're, wait, we're falling one for every four that we're going over. So if I fall one, I'm running one, two, three, four. Okay, so basically that's all we're doing. We're just finding the slope at one particular point on a function. And so we can narrow this down and look at basically finding um, the derivative of a function so that we can plug in the number into that derivative to figure out what the slope that point would be if it exists. And so we pretty much just looked at all of 3.1 on this section, we might be moving a little faster at this chapter. And so we'll look at 3.2 tomorrow. And I think I'm going to show you a video, um, another video from three blue and one brown. Let me stop my share. Okay, so class is over. I just have office hours now. Yeah, so let me pause this and then answer some of your questions.